Yeah, you know, I think both Godwin and Kyle have really grown. I've really been impressed with their maturity. I think they've done a terrific job leading these last couple of years. They learn from some great ones, too, and they're fortunate for that. But um, they're both playing at a high level. Both guys, I think, are just outstanding teammates and have very bright futures. I think both are going to get an opportunity. And if they get an opportunity, I think they're going to play for a long time on Sunday because they've both got, they've got different skill sets, but they've got, I think, Sunday talent and um, definitely Sunday attitude and work ethic. So excited to have them for a couple more games. And uh, then Kyle, you know, just it's a family affair there. You know, with both he, I had the privilege of co coach both he and his brother Cam and you know, his mom and dad. It's it's just been great. It seems like yesterday that I walked into his house in New Jersey. So it's um, it just it's 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 an emotional week for me. You know, I go back with a lot of these guys to start in the recruiting process when they were 15, 16 years old to see the men that they've become while well, going through our program. I'm just really proud of them. Uh, they come from great families, so we're, we're a big leg up when they first get here. But just very proud of the men that they've become and excited not only for the last few games with them, but also excited for their futures. The coach has said it. Everybody says that it goes more quickly than you think it will. Has it felt that way to you? In terms of finally getting to um, a position in which I feel like I'm making a larger impact and influence. Um, it feels like I finally gained my grounds and uh, gotten past just getting my feet wet. And then, you know, you blink and you're towards the 11th and 12th games of the season. So um, just got to do the most with what I have left. Um, this is for Kyle. Um, Purdue threw it 61 times on Saturday. That's the most any team has thrown against you this year. What was it like in the bat defensive backfield uh, facing uh, that? You know, honestly, I wasn't that happy. Because, you know, they threw it a bunch of times. I didn't feel like I got enough opportunities myself. Um, but um, a lot of those throws were check downs and uh, dump throws. I think he, they threw the ball 61 times, uh, 398 or so yards. It's like six yards in attempt. And on completions, a little bit over 10 yards in attempt, mostly just check downs and then run for a few yards after that. Um, their longest completion was 35 yards, which that may have been um, – that may have been the fake punt. Um, I'm not, I'm, I could be mistaken, but either way, I'm just saying a lot of it was, you know, dinks and dunks. Um, so with with the defensive line in the front seven playing the way that they're playing, we need to understand that we're going to get a lot of passes from a lot of teams, um, especially in this season. Towards the second half, teams have constantly just abandoned the running game. Um, they only ran the ball for 40 yards and less than two yards of carry. So with that understanding, we know on the back on the back half of our team that we're going to get attacked, and we have been all year. Um, and you know it doesn't help our stats, but um, in a way, numbers are for losers because um, we only gave up 13 points as a whole. So, yeah. Fitz said on uh, Saturday he was talking about the grinding that this team does, and then he said we didn't get the we didn't get the return on that right away, but they didn't stop. What kept you guys going when you did not get the return? In the DB room, more specifically, um, Goblin and I, we were just having a um, just a basic conversation that we have just in the locker room with a lot of DBs around. We were just talking about how um, we have the decision at this point in this juncture in the season to we can win out or we can end up allowing some of our early stifles to keep us from a bowl game and keeping us from having the type of season that we already imagined that we would have. Um, so with that, we just made the decision. And I don't think necessarily a lot of things changed. We just did what we did better and harder because we realized that it wasn't getting it done um, at that point in time. So all you could do is just keep going. Kyle, you've seen four of your teammates called for targeting this year. And, and since you're out there uh, in situations in open field a lot where you have to make a, a quick decision. Has it has it changed the way you play or think through a play at all? Do you have to be more tentative? That's actually a tough question to answer um, because on one end, you know, coaches and players talk about, you know, we want to play free without constrictions and just allow us to make plays because this is the things that we've been doing our whole lives. But um, – we just understand that there's stipulations and regulations, boundaries that are now on our game, and it's for the betterment of it. So with that, you just kind of take it and understand it and try to play within you know, that structure. 
I don't think anybody's necessarily been just irate over their rulings. It's just, man, sometimes wrong place, wrong time, and we're trying to be football players, but we're also trying to be safe. So, All three of you maybe could answer, uh, what does it mean to be ranked in the top 25, and after, especially after your start that you had? Does it give you a little extra incentive to keep it going? Uh, I don't look at rankings at all. Um, uh, we know what we have in our locker room. We know what we have in this room. And it, whatever they think of us outside of it doesn't change anything. Um, unfortunately, I might say the opposite. Uh, as, as, as a senior and, you know, a potential leader in the, in the defensive back group, you know, I just challenged our, our guys um, in our room that, you know, this is going to be our last opportunity as seniors. And we want to go out not only on top every single week, but also just put Northwestern on the platform even further for our further endeavors years to come um, and just continue to gain respect for the program. Um, I don't, and Coach Fitz talked about, you know, potentially getting bored with winning. Um, I just, I wanted to make it clear that it needs to be, it needs to be a habit. So, yeah. Uh, what was the board with winning? <laughs> he told you guys that? Um, yeah, that was that was a little something after uh, after the game. Um, in terms of, you know, we weren't as quick to you know jump around and do our dances and stuff like that. Um, and I don't know, that's just something that I guess he caught his attention and uh, immediately he wanted to nip that in the butt, and that it just needs to be an infectious, contagious thing that you know it's hard to win in the Big Ten, and we need to continue doing it.